Hey, everyone. Hello. Yes. It's a pajama themed party today. <laughs> because we're coding an alarm clock, Michael. Oh, oh that makes. <laughs> As you can see, this is news <laughs> to Michael. Yes. There we go. Well, Leanne just told me, like, put pajamas on before the stream, and I thought that was a bit weird, but. Yeah, who am I to say no? You know not to ask questions. Yes, correct. Oh, look, Alex is here. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, Alex. <laughs> Woo, Dave Collison is back. Okay, that uh, makes perfect has, sense now. Well, I'm glad. The very first person to say hello was Andrew. Great, mm -hmm. waiting for this. Good vibes. <laughs> look at you all. Thank you for dropping on by. The Scrimba Newsletter Co. Team member, I guess. <laughs> Alana, hello. Enrico's back, putting that tiger into the chat. Now, if you don't know what this is about, it's our weekly tradition. If you're new here, please put a bunny rabbit into the chat. If you've been before, hit me with that tiger. We won't use this information, it's just for fun. And because people start doing it on their own, so we have to explain what it is. Yeah, we can't stop <laughs> Ooh, Mr. Ben. I keep missing these, so I finally Yay. made it. Congrats. Yes, victory. <laughs> Good Hello. morning from Japan. Okay. Really? It's morning in Japan. It is. Yes. Good morning to you too. Good morning. Is that Friday? Saturday? No, it's Saturday, right? No, Friday. Yeah, it must be. No, I think it's Saturday. Oh, time zones are confusing. Anyway. I think it's Saturday. <laughs> Hello, yeah. Elephant, tiger, tiger. Yes. And some bunnies into the chat. So excited. Woo, welcome bunnies. Slash, welcome back tigers. Nice. Where is Pumpkin? Good question. Where is Pumpkin? He is snoozing somewhere. Snoozing somewhere. Yes. Undisclosed location in Wales. Somewhere <laughs> in the house, he's snoozing. Ooh, hello from Somalia. Hello. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Rah, indeed. Yes. And Kitty? Uh, she was running around trying to chew the wires on the yes. background lights a minute ago. Correct. She has a. I was told to get her out. A passion for chewing electrical wires, which is slightly worrying. <laughs> yeah, she likes. Never to mind. <laughs> yes. So anyway, on with the show. Oh my god. <laughs> Michael's yawning because we're making an alarm clock. Making an alarm clock. I'm wearing the pajamas. Everything is uh, so bizarre. Yes, I've already. Then we're talking done about some sleep. stuff. Oh, I'm going to be yawning a lot in this stream. So and I'm really sorry if you're just like me who catches yawns of other people, or like if someone talks about yawning, I'm yawning. That that's just how it goes. <laughs> Anyway, I've started <laughs> off <laughs> the HTML here um, so we can get down to the real juicy oh, stuff. That will wake hour. you up. That'll be a fun, fun hour. What we have here, yes. just to run through what is already preloaded in the HTML. Maybe actually, I can also drop this into the chat. Okay. In case people want to have a go on their own. Get this man some coffee. Yeah, <clears> totally. <throat> Should have done that, Michael. Oh. You need that alarm clock. <laughs> anyway, in here we have uh, a container. <laughs> I swear someone's going to make a drinking game after this YouTube video. <laughs> and two paragraphs, or three paragraphs, actually. One which will display the current time, currently has this placeholder and one yeah. which will display the alarm time after you set it, which we have not yet done or made the functionality for. There's also this alarm message display. My idea is to have it say something like, woo, good morning, Michael, <laughs> hammer emoji. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we will see. And then these inputs are inside a form, mainly so that they can, <laughs> um, be reset when you submit them. And we have one for hours and one for minutes. The displays also have seconds. Um, we might remove that later. It's just because you'll see 
but it's kind of annoying when you want to compare the two times and you don't know how much more of a minute is left. So you're just waiting. So that's why the seconds are there at the moment, but mm. might remove them later because I don't think anyone really needs to set their alarm to the second. Mm. But you could. The option's there. And then a button with a type of submit ID set alarm button. Um, the completely non-political colors I have chosen for this color scheme, which is nothing to do with any country at all, just completely random, <laughs> are styled in the HTML along with um, actually not much else. A bit of flexbox to center things, the usual um, font family inherit to make sure we have uh, the same font family, the monospace going onto the button and the inputs, but actually I'm not sure that's worked. No, it has. And then a nice little hover state. And I like this trick. Button active transform scale 0.96 gives it a nice satisfying effect. Mm, that's click. Oh, very. <laughs> Brilliant. Hello, Mom and Sir from India. <laughs> Hello to you too. Hello, share some coffee. Yeah. I would like some coffee. Woo! John is back, was here in our Wednesday stream having his LinkedIn um, review. <laughs> That's on our YouTube channel as well, so Ooh. you can go and check that out. Nice video, by the way. Yeah. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. And Christine has donuts with coffee. Nice. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, I have made, um, well, I've done all the grabbing the elements by ID business. I've got two variables, current time and alarm time, which are currently set to null. And there's an audio, which is set to audio bells MP3, which is this, which sounds like this. That's going to be our, oh, hello. <laughs> That's going to be our alarm sound. Hmm. Cathedral bells. Why not? Mm, yeah, very almost like waking up in Italy. Or to the beginning of an ACDC song. Mm. Either way, or both. And there are some functions which we're going to fill out. Render current time, which I plan to go here. Yeah. Set alarm, which is going to fire um, when we hit this button. Alarm checker is the function which is going to compare the time we've set for the alarm and the current time. And function ring the alarm, which will <coughs> ring the alarm. <laughs> and render a message um, to say, wake up, Michael. Hammer emoji. Sounds like waking up in a monastery. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Church bell alarm. Did the video freeze? No, uh, I don't think so. Works on my machine. So give it a refresh. Although if it's frozen, this won't help. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> um, very ominous bell. <laughs> they are a bit. Hello. Hello to you too. So, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Over to you, Michael. I think you need to wake up. Oh. And I'll keep an eye on the chat. Let us know if you have any tips, I guess. I have to admit, it was very, I struggled with focus, so I'm not entirely sure whether I remember that. <laughs> well, luckily, it's all set out nicely in these functions. Function mm. render current time. So what we have to do for this then is, yeah, get the current time in JS. Render current time. Yeah, my idea is we're going to grab it with the old, what do you call it, um, current date thingy. You'll have to Google it. I don't remember what it's called. New date. That's the one. New date JS. Yeah. Zoom in something like that. Yeah. Exactly. So pretty much we can copy and paste that, but... Instead of having days, we're going to get the minutes and hours and seconds. So get uh, 
Whoops. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, like that five. looks promising. Greetings from Liverpool. It's my first time here. So be gentle. We're always gentle here. Yes. <laughs> Do not fear. Mm -hmm. I've forgotten something very important, and that is today's music. Yes. Night driving. That's a problem. Okay. Okay. Back to you. So what have we got? Const. I think we should change that to const current time. Why? No, actually maybe it could be today. Okay, 17.11.56, does that sound good? 59, 12. Yeah. That is current time in the UK. Yeah. Does it give you local time then? Or is it just that we're the same as UTC? Uh, no, because we're in BST right now. So it gives you local time. Does it? Yeah, because we're in summertime right now. Can you Google current time UTC? You don't trust me, do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. It does give you current time. So this maybe would work wherever you are. It somehow knows from the browser, does yes. it? Yes, uh -huh. from, your, from your settings. Handy. Yes, but if you, for example, travel somewhere and your laptop time doesn't update, this will break. As is quite often the case with things like calendars and stuff, it doesn't update. Yeah, Question... you, have to, you have to go into settings and make sure that you, the time zone has switched with location services. Yeah. Um, how are you getting that code, says Sappy Dev, when you search in Google? Um, go back to the Google search. This here uh, this. is a yeah a plugin called Grepper, which is very handy. Yeah. You can also, um, if you click this, uh, there's Pumpkin. Wow. <laughs> you can set up an account and answer questions yourself and upvote things and yeah. Very nice little add in. How nice. do you hear the music without the double feedback through the mic? Um, I don't know. It's music through StreamYard. Mm. How we don't have feedback and pure luck, I guess. Yeah. Well, do you mute your, mute your computer? Uh, no, I actually don't. Try StreamYard. <laughs> yes. yes. Matt, can we see this video later? Yes, you can. What does UTC stand for? What does UTC stand for? Is that universal time something, which is the, oh, <laughs> this is where my explanation falls down. Coordinated universal time. So it's the CUT. Yeah, I can see why they didn't use that. So it's the time. Universal time coordinated, there you go. That computers are automatically set to or something? Uh, no, I think it's not just computers, I think it's just universal. I don't hey, think it's universal. Bye -bye. <laughs> well, I don't think on Mars they're using this. Uh, they <laughs> actually do. Well, humans might be, but not Mars. Yes, well, there aren't any Martians <laughs> to use the Michael. time zone. <laughs> Let's go back to what we were doing. But not the Martians. <laughs> like, touche. The so Martians what do we have here? So we, we just now. got the now time. Oh, right. Yeah. So do you think we can just... Right, so today.gethours will get you what hour it is. Today.getminutes. Got current time business? Yeah, that's set because we're going to need it later. Why? To compare the alarm time with the current time. Oh, you can change let current time to now. Can you? I think you can. Uh, 
and then presumably current time display equals. Oh, sorry, it's an HTML element, isn't it? Uh, now. Okay, we have time. We have time, but it is not updating. Mm, no. Oh, here, here, here. Because we need to re render it every second for it to do that. Oh, was it? Go use the old set interval. Oh, is it? Okay. Set interval. Thank do you remember, you. Do you remember how, how it works? Gina. Was it? Uh, Coordinated universal time is the primary time standard by which the world regulates clocks and time. Thank you for a much better explanation than I gave. So it takes a callback. Good morning from UTC minus six, Alabama. Good morning. And yeah, and then that goes in there. And then hopefully, okay. we will get the time every second. Okay. Yes. Oh, actually, we're doing. So, I shouldn't be surprised, but <laughs> I always am. What this is doing is every 1000 milliseconds, AKA every second, it's running the render current time function, which is then rendering the hours, the minutes and the seconds. Problem with this, which we've just missed for the next minute, is that it doesn't automatically add the zero in front of the nine. Or... No, I'll, I'll just skip that bit. <laughs> well, luckily it's easy to fix. You just put in um, at the top. Add zeros. Oh, okay. JavaScript add lead in zero to the date. Okay, cool. You put in a conditional. If minutes divided by 10 is less than one, minutes equals zero plus minutes. Okay, so there is. Oh, they're using slice. Why? It's probably better that's oh, hang on. anyway. Oh look. Oh there we go. So, oh look, Dave's got a suggestion. The modern way. Locale date string? Yeah. Date to locale time string. And then Time string. This business. Thank you, Dave. There you go. So what is it? Can I see line eleven, please? There it is. Const to date equals new date. So Oh, hang on. Uh, so it's a lot. Let me see. Actually, today dot to locale time string. Now we'll have to wait fifteen nail biting seconds to find out if it's worked. No, I think I think that should be it. Well, how can we tell until it gets to one that wouldn't have the zero? Oh, yes. Okay. Come, come on. So in that case, that's pretty much what we need to do. Yes. So we just need this variable. Move it to there. And that's so, it. There you go. That's nice and simple. There we go. No need to pad zeros and ifs and stuff. You know, we've got in line five, we've set let current time to null. And then in line 11, there's const now equals new date. And then we've set current time to now. Can we not just set in line 11, current time equals new date? Well, yeah, but the, you, you, you need to have two places to update that. So it's just easier to save it into one variable and then just populate it. You would still use it though. Say that again. It, oh, and then set this to current time. Yes. Well, yeah. you wouldn't need line 12. And then you would just put current time in what's currently in line 13. That's what you mean. I think so. Okay. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Okay. Saved okay. a line of code. Good. Wait. So, <laughs> render current time function. I think we can call that done. It's rendering the current time. Okay. <laughs> um, so now we want to set the alarm. 
Okay, so what is actually alarm display, message display? How does that work? Message display is going to say, wake up, Michael, hammer emoji. Maybe three hammer emojis. Or maybe uh, a gong. Is there a gong emoji? <laughs> I display message. Oh, so there's a paragraph on someone. Okay. But that we won't use that until the ring the alarm function. Okay. So for now, we only need the one, I think it's called alarm time. So alarm be... time display. Okay. And so let alarm time is currently initialized to no. Oh, so, oh, and you already. Yeah. Michael, I'm trying to. What? <laughs> um, comments and things. Yes. So there is alarm message display. Which is the white. Um, and you text. have already wired up the button on the click. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. which is the big yellow set alarm button. So that's me, right? Okay. So, huh. Can't now equals today. And where's this form? Hours and minutes? Where does that tie? Where did where did where did this come from? Mm -hmm. Alarm inputs. Is this already here? Alarm I hope inputs? Simon that has been cleared up. Let me know if not. What's the question? Alarm inputs. No, that hasn't. So it's not in the JavaScript file yet. Like this form. It's not mm -hmm. right up yet. No. Well, the button is, but not the inputs, I don't think. Uh, okay. I wonder if I should actually just wire this up to the form instead. I don't think so. I think what we should do is in the set alarm time function, um, we can have variables Good. let alarm hours and set that to document dot get element i id hours input or whatever it's called wakey hours okay <laughs> wakey hour really but uh -huh. yeah and then Hours input dot value, hopefully. Three. Okay. We have a three. And then copy that and do the same for the minutes. Okay, so grab that from HTML to JavaScript. Cool. Just uh, check the mins is actually working. Three. So. Now the next thing is we have to get the hours and the minutes into the same format as the time. Which could be tricky. <laughs> Um, Actually, I don't think it is that tricky. We just need to do const. Yeah, const wakey time. What is this? Mm. Well, I have to set get time. Set time. So this is like just to clarify: is this setting time from now? No, it's or setting is this setting to like seven a.m. 
Michael, when you set an alarm, do you put in, yeah, I want to sleep for 11 and a half hours. Yes. No, you don't. You, you put in the time that you want it to ring. So okay. this is 7.30, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm like it's new date. Is it possible you can upload this video on this channel? Yes. Absolutely. It will be available straight away. I'd love to sleep for 11 and a half hours. Yes, <laughs> that was optimistic, Dave. <laughs> Michael. Uh, hang on a sec. Time and minutes. Uh huh. Okay. So I think. So if I take new date, get time, and add. Uh, hours by 60. Are you multiplying by 60? So you get... So basically what I want to do is I want to say... It's like, well, here, it's a set time with the demo. So you have a future date and then you set time to the time that you get. So. I just say get, get time, we'll do okay. Mm -hmm. So I get the milliseconds from, from the epoch. Uh, so I, I, get just these, love that. <laughs> I get these epoch milliseconds. And then what? And then I want to add that wake up time so that's hours, that's minutes. Is this really the best way of doing it? I don't know, that's what uh, Mozilla Org says, so. Because I had an idea of just. Who am I to argue with it? Using a string interpolation. Interpolation. What? So it's like <laughs> alarm time equals alarm hour, colon, alarm minute, colon, nah. oh, oh. We're not doing that. Why not? Mm, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could do that. Or we could do what Mike said. Why not add hours and minutes plus OO for seconds in one variable? I because, I don't thing. know, like, I feel like... It's and then, to... No, look, and then add them to the local time string. Did I just remove myself? No. I don't know. I don't know either. I feel like the screen just got massive. Oh, that's why. There we go. We're back. Anyway. But anyway, that sounded like a good idea. Minutes in milliseconds. Okay. Ah, so that's... You've got three minutes on this and then we're doing that. <laughs> uh, and hours, so I need to multiply that by three. Will you be adding it to get date? Not sure. Wouldn't we be adding it to get date? Yeah, so what ah, 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 Just woke up. Today, <laughs> set time. Hmm. Let date equals new date. Date, set seconds. Ah, so I think I need to do. Plus seventy. Yeah, is that is that going to be? And then got uh, two. What cal time stream was that? I think so. Yeah. Oops, I'm not there. Uh, are you setting it to a constant? Mm, yep, yeah, from that. Are you changing the constant or trying to? Should that const be a let on line 21? Yeah, I'm not updating it. 
I was setting it at once. We'll get the old dev tools out then, find out what the deal is. Console. Intermediate value set time to local string is not a function. Input fields are still a string. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't this work? New date, new date. New date, oh. <laughs> date, set hours, plus hour. It might be. If you compare a string, you're limiting the alarm time to be no more than 24 hours away. Yeah. E well. Yes. Using alarm time in seconds and milliseconds allows infinite options. Oh, that hasn't changed anything. Damn it. Can ah. you give people a rundown of what's actually happening here? Well, I'm just trying to replicate what these docs say over here. So you have future date, which is just new date. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why they're setting this to this particular time, but whatever. Because that's the launch date. Sure. Uh, future date set time. Launch date get time. Console log future date. 1st of July. Yeah, so they're setting, so they're making these times equal. Mm -hmm. And they're adding five minutes to that time. Okay. So all I want to do is, I probably should do the same. I should probably do the same and say, uh, so make that a new date. And then They Interesting, Jorgen. get time plus that. So I want to say that set time plus the same thing, right? Just like that. Okay. So this should be, it should be now, when the alarm. Helpful comments. Yeah, just the tracker. Those are different. Yes. Name, Michael, you've done, uh, so I've you've done, added uh, three uh, hours. Ah, uh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I've added three hours to the alarm. Okay, I think we should just do my idea of comparing strings. Ugh. Because we don't actually have the inputs to set them further than 24 hours in advance anyway. So that's the limitation of our app. Oh well. Okay. <laughs> okay, what was your idea again? <laughs> <laughs> Using string interpolation uh, so to make a string. I, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> you want this? Uh huh. Uh, without the yeah. Okay. Reiki mint and then colon zero zero. Right now, console log that. I don't like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Well, we, we need to see if it actually works. Good. So now we need to pad them out. I don't know if we could use, probably not, to local string. If not, we can use a little conditional. Look up to local string what it actually does. Why are you making a new? Set. Set hours. Oh, so this is a bit like what Jorgen was saying. You could do something like date time equals hour equals seven minutes equals 30. 
<laughs> but who a three hour snooze? <laughs> That's a good point. We might use it later for the snooze button if we can rem remember what it was. Do you recommend writing comments when you're coding? Yes. And if something wouldn't otherwise be clear, yes. And I think it's fine to use them as you're going along to remind yourself what each part is, as long as you clean it up at the end. Oh, hey, 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 so what was that? We have a Roomba course on clean code. <laughs> okay. Shade. Okay. Of course. <laughs> um, which talks a bit about what type of comments are good and which you should avoid. So you can check that out. Michael needs it. Set minutes. Just compare the string, guys. Lol. I completely agree, Mike Seattle. Would date pass work with that string? Would it? Is that a thing? Date pass? Looks like it is. The date pass method passes a string representation of date. What? Date pass. Google it on there for people to see. Yeah, but how do you make it tomorrow? Is that what you were already looking at? No. Well, that, that's why I wasn't using date pass because I can't remember. How do you set it to like tomorrow? Because I think it's like. Oh, I think. Pass. Victor is saying you could use it on the string. Date pass. There we go. Date pass. So you see, you have to get like the year and stuff. You can just do it with time. Time pass? Set it out six minutes. Arun has an idea. Const current date equals new date. Const hours equals 10. Const hours equals 10. Const destination date. New date, current date, set hours. Oh, I hate working with dates. <laughs> hate it. Okay, so what is that? Ninth of... Why is that not saved in here? Come on. Mm, not sure. That's today, you see? So it's like you set the alarm and it sets it to today. That's annoying. Right? That's annoying. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now I just want to quickly find I mean, actually, it could be not today. I mean, you could want an alarm yeah, you, for today. you could want an alarm today as well. So you definitely gets... want an alarm in the future. Yes. <laughs> so I think this problem kind of solves itself. Because if you put it to 0530, the next time it would match would be the next one that you want. It's not going to Yeah, but if you're just comparing strings, so you don't ring. know if it's today or tomorrow. That's why I was going for milliseconds. Yeah, but if you use the 24 hour clock, it's not going to be an issue, is it? Well, it still is going to be an issue because if you set it to like, yeah. well, if you set this to, why is it scrolling to zero? Because it's got a maximum of 24 on it. If you go to the HTML, it can't go above 24. No, I mean, like, if you set that to nine, yeah. right? It's nine tomorrow. Yes. It's 9 a.m. If you want the nine o'clock today, you go for 21. Yeah, but if you set it to 22, that's going to be today. Yes, that's how the 24 hour clock works, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they use it in the army. Yeah, so you don't that's... get confused about whether it's today or tomorrow. Yeah, but that's the. Uh... <laughs> I feel like I'm struggling to ex explain myself. Okay. That is <laughs> annoying. <laughs> why? <laughs> If it's good enough for the military, Michael. Well, like in this case, you see my alarm time is perfectly fine. 
when I set hours and set minutes. What did you put in to get that? I just used the hours and minutes that we were in for it. Oh, this is... And then I just set hours and minutes in there. See? We should do this. <laughs> but, and what is that? But with const alarm time. And how do you, okay, and what, what, what then? If we, if we, if we make it as a string like that, well, we already have it like that, no? There, there we are. Do we? Yeah. Right, okay, good. So then what? Now we need to put in the conditional to add the Oh, that's what I mean. Zero. Like as soon as we used to, we start adding these conditionals to pack with zeros, it's a smell. <laughs> it's a smell. <laughs> My God. It's just awful. <laughs> it it reeks. <laughs> okay, well let's do it. So at least we have something that works and then you can refactor at the end. <laughs> you know that we're not gonna do Michael, it. Michael, you're looking for problems that don't exist. Yeah, but I don't want to solve it like that because then it's like you're padding with zeros and it's just a bit awkward, you know? And I wonder like, is there a better way? Probably there is a better way, yes. Is there a better way? I feel like there must be a better way. Uh, I'm short of just googling how to make how to set an alarm in JavaScript. <laughs> oh well. Okay. Fine. Uh, it's like uh, the usual. I tried to I tried to overthink it. Once you've padded, go... you've padded. You only have to code it once. That's a very good point. Ah, okay. It should probably just be an interval running every second that compares the current hour and the current one. Yes, that's what I've been trying to get him to do since the stream began. <laughs> but at least someone agrees with me. Woo! I feel awkward doing this. Then you don't really need to create a date for the alarm. Just store the hours in the minutes in separate letters. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. No, wiki minutes. So I won't write in this. Right. And then. But we also need to do the hours though. Oh. Make it work, Michael, then make it pretty. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's give it a go. Oh, I'm not console logging anything. Whoops. I suppose, like, what's the point of console logging now? Just, um, what is it? Alarm, this message is played. Oh, text content equals uh, wakey time. That has not worked. That has not worked. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Good question. Oh. Um. Is it actually grabbing the wakey mins and wakey hours from the inputs? Yes. Oh, I really hate the name of these uh, of these variables. No, pad start and pad end method. Yes. Oh four oh three. Pad start. So why did it override? What did it do? I missed it. Yeah, it does work. No, nah, it outputs. That's correct. Good. It's just this this text content. Alarm message display is not working. Actually. Oh no, you need an alarm time display. Oh. Uh, I'm not sure why. Oh, because we haven't grabbed alarm message display. And we actually have. So I don't know yeah. why that didn't work. But anyway, we'll get to that later. Hopefully, this will display the alarm time. Yet. Okay. <laughs> alarm time.
Oh, it gets uh, overridden every time you run this timer. No. I think so. How? Because you render this, and that runs on every time. Yeah, but that's the current one. That's the one at the top. Alarm time display dot text content equals wakey time. Let's have a look. So why is it not updating that text content? Function set alarm. We're grabbing these. Oops, not that. Set alarm. See? We have this. That is. Did you see what it just did? Yes. Do, do it again. Because it, it flashes the screen. See? Nothing. Wait a second. It, got, it does flash, so I think I think it's our... Have we not shut the render current time in the right place or something? Yeah, I think. Alarm message. Read the code. That's the important thing. This, this, let wakey time equals this. Maybe someone had somebody posted something, uh, a suggestion or something. Uh, it's because, you, oh, right, yes, you're using a form. You need to use prevent default. It is that. Ah, oh, damn it. Every time I use a form, I have this problem event dot prevent default yes. <laughs> yeah, it refreshes the screen when you do that yeah yeah okay there we are. okay so when you use a oh. form and i'm not sure if it's just a form or if you have a button with a type set to submit yeah but one of type the submit. two that's what, that's what does it it resets the form but why then has that reset the whole thing? Because the alarm time is not inside of that form. Uh, like the default behavior to submit is like you are sending something to the server so it refreshes the page. No, there we go. Thank so you, it Dave. starts the whole you thing. Your head. Right, now we need to do an alarm checker function which will compare wakey time and now or current time, whatever we called it. But wakey time is ah. Uh, that's why you created this variable called alarm time. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, so alarm it's... time was doing in my idea the same thing as wakey time. Yeah, but it's you, Just you made the global. Less annoying word. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it's a very annoying uh, <laughs> variable name, and I, it's kind of annoying me. Even though I've created it, it's annoying me a lot. There you go. Yeah, so alarm time is basically the global to have to check it in this alarm checker. Yeah, so because right. otherwise it's scoped within mm -hmm. another function and we can't compare them. Okay, so no, okay. in that case, what is it if alarm time time equals current time? Then Google how to start the alarm. Actually, no, for now, console log alarm ringing, and then we're going to fill out our ring the alarm function in a bit. All right, then. Else. Well, else nothing. Don't really need an else. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. We also need to use set interval for this. Because otherwise, it's just going to run once. We need it to run every second, don't we? 
Yes. So. Michael, there's no point doing this because you're going to have to save it, which will reset it. Okay. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> what happened last time you said that to me? Uh, I broke something. No. You let Pumpkin out to have a fight with the neighbourhood <laughs> cat called Miles. <laughs> well, I did not. <laughs> Pumpkin escaped <laughs> into the window. With your assistance. Anyway. I was not present in that location whatsoever. <laughs> so we're going to put this in set interval. Yes. And run every second. <laughs> I mean, really, could you run it every minute? We don't really need the seconds. But anyway, for now we'll do seconds. Button in full is automatically set to type submit. So if you set it to type button, maybe that doesn't happen? Not sure. Don't quote me on that. Just call alarm check from the other interval. Oh, yeah. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, alarm ringing. So what do you think of this idea from Michael Limba? Just call alarm check from the other um, the other set interval. So like this. Where's that story? Because the alarm time is not equal to the current time now. Well, JavaScript disagrees. Well. Null. Oh, because they're both null? And the current time is null. Yeah. The current time is not null. It is on page load. But okay. after a second. So when we, in the, um, the so other... So instead of calling our alarm check here. Yeah set it in our the other one with set interval render current time underneath it <laughs> maybe it doesn't matter where you put it Something like that. yeah i think mm -hmm. good that's a long all right, and now we wait. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is what I mean by why we needed the seconds for this stream, because otherwise you don't know how long you're waiting or if it's even going to do anything. Now we can count down awkwardly. Uh, well, uh, what, what's the <laughs> ring that alarm supposed to do? Oh, it rings the yeah, bell. Look, then. it's going to do it. Look. Yes, okay, come yeah, on. Thanks. Thank you for the suggestion, Michael Emma. Anyway, yeah, it rings the bell. So we're going to replace line 36 with calling the ring the alarm function. And then we're going to ring the bell and we're going to update the text content of uh, the message. Ah, uh, so audio. I think it's just audio.start or something. Audio.play. And then I think you need to put bells.mp3 in those brackets. That's already safe, like that, no? Oh, in that, yeah, maybe it's just that then. All right. Ooh, better hurry up. Uh -huh. All right. No! <laughs> uh, <laughs> ah, the stress. Okay. Yes! Okay. Yes! Come on clapping. <laughs> There's no way to turn it off. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> we can add a, a button. Okay. But anyway, for now, we also need to do the message inside the function. Hello, message display dot text content equals wake up Michael hammer emoji. <laughs> Hammer emoji. Oh. 
at all. All right, the bell's nice. The bell's nice. Okay. All right. Oh, okay, 17, six. Okay, here we go. <laughs> wow, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> it's not even six o'clock and you've done it. It's the first time for everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's the final countdown. Oh, Why boy. don't you set the current time to the time on its initial declaration? What does that mean? Why don't you set the current time to the time on its initial declaration? I don't know. Let's add a stop button. <laughs> I don't know, Dave. What does that mean? Michael, because it, ah, it's what? very simple to add a stop button. Oh. Would it be in the form? I think it would be under the form. But then you wouldn't really want it in, let's see. This is where you get into maybe we should only render the. Yeah, we should render the button in the ring the alarm function, probably. But we don't have that much time left. Why are you using null? Lol. Um, because that's what the suggestion from W3 schools or somewhere did. So, yep, that's why I use null. <laughs> very, very nice. Yes, thank you, Rahul. Alarm goes off and you'll never sleep again with constant infinity hello. Exactly. Oh, I see what Dave means. Instead of setting it to null in line five, we can just, um, yeah, but then we need, actually, maybe that would work. That would work, yeah. Mm, what will we'll work? Dave's saying in what's now line seven, why have we set it to null? We could just set it to the new, yeah, that. Uh, you, I'll see what I mean. And then update it every second. Mm -hmm. Well, we are updating it every second, aren't we? Yeah, I, I don't think it will make any difference as such because you also need to do that. Just kind of because you see, there is this lag. If you don't display, there's this lag for a second. You need to do that straight away so it shows you the time straight away. And then you do that. Okay. Yeah. You can do that. Let's wire up this stop button. It's just function stop alarm and then audio dot stop. I think stop alarm is not defined. Yes. Okay, we'll do that now. Stop. Alarm message display text. It was rainbow. <laughs> All uh, right. Hey, oh, look at that. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> yeah, it's because you haven't put the thingy in there. I think if you just put zero, that will fix it. Just ignore the fact there's slight like, limitation here. Okay. It would be good if that button was only rendered in the alarm ringing function, but that's a stretch. You, you, you should you should compare <laughs> times instead of strings. No, that's not important. It is. You, <laughs> you should compare times instead of strings. It should be you should be comparing milliseconds. Yes. Error. Unknown error. <laughs> that's such an anticlimax. What does it say in the old DevTools? I know it's not going to show it now. There it is. Audio.stop is not a function. Stop what? audio JavaScript. Oh, I think it's audio.pause. Is it? It is. Yeah, it's audio.pause. Ah. Okay. Well, there we go. Now that. What is this in? JS. Yes. It's audio.pause. 
<laughs> Whoops, look at that. And now there's a double zero. Oh, yikes. <laughs> See, I told you, you should compare milliseconds. Well, if you stop showing people all the bugs with my code, Michael, we wouldn't have this problem. <laughs> <laughs> Current time gets set before its first use, so no difference. There we go. Hello. All right then. Done. Beautiful. Oh, wow. That actually went quite well. Okay, done. In the end. <laughs> Wait. Very nice, guys. That was amazing. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for coming. Oh, no, I've got this again. It was brilliant. Um, ooh, while I'm here, I will reveal what we're up to next week. It's like I'm coding, and I don't yawn, and as soon as I stop, I start yawning. That's the universe trying to tell you something, Michael. <sighs> so, next week, we will be discovering CSS Grid. Oh my word. I know. I am looking forward to that one. In the latest of our discovery series. Yes. I hope you join us then. And Michael is joining us on Wednesday. Do I? Double Michael Week. Yeah. JavaScript, the tricky parts. Including uh, dealing with yes. times in JavaScript, yes, <laughs> if it, you want. Uh. <laughs> We're going to talk about the parts of JS which often trip people up. Block scope, global scope, hoisting, array functions, all that good stuff. If you fancy joining us for that, please consider hitting the old oh subscribe button. That is definitely going to be like... Giving us a thumbs up. Yeah, that's going <laughs> to be even more than an hour. It might be. Yeah, I think. Uh, for the record, I would have used Michael's milliseconds technique. Yes, thank you. <laughs> exactly. You should use milliseconds. Yes, it will probably take you a couple of hours to work it out. Uh, well, it would take me a couple of hours to work it out, but it's better. Nice job, guys. Please, for the next session, can you provide the starter code so we can code at the same time? That is a good mm. idea. I could get it in the email. Oh, I see what you mean, right? Like share the... Share the screen before the before the stream. Yeah, that's a very good idea. That's a very good idea. One final thing. If you're ever wondering yes. um, what's up next for our streams, you can find out in our newsletter. <laughs> written by Alana and I. And you can sign up right here. How long have you guys been um, programming in Java? Java, not at all. Zero. JavaScript. Um, a bit more than that. A little bit more. Yeah, not not much more though. Yeah, a couple of years. <laughs> there no, are there any non-tricky JavaScript parts? Um, no. Setting a variable, that's straightforward. Uh, I don't know. Like, you know that, <laughs> Even that's, yeah. That is quite controversial. Yeah. yeah. Is it let, const, bar? <laughs> is it just like that? Is it, you know, hoisting comes into this already? blocks go <laughs> so yeah even declaring the variable is quite controversial yes, uh, yes. what's uh, your main takeaway from this session michael oh dates are hard time is hard everything is hard life is hard there you go but but today's friday it's worth it to make an amazing alarm yes which may or may not wake you up <laughs> yes any closing thoughts it's friday so enjoy your weekend or Saturday, if it's Saturday. Or Saturday, you... yeah. We can definitely enjoy the weekend. Definitely. Well, thank you all oh, for oh. coming and tolerating Michael's yawning. <laughs> Bye for now. Oh.